Welcome to Lecture 7, 1.1, Linear Equations and Rational Equations. Alright, now we've gotten into the material that is not supposed to be review anymore, even though some of you may have seen it previously. So, first objective is solve linear equations in one variable. Alright, so the definition is going to be a linear equation in one variable is an equation that can be written in the form ax plus b equals zero where a and b are real numbers like one, two, three, negative one, a half, and a does not equal zero, and x is the variable. x is the variable, but sometimes other variables might be used, like n, m, y, and so on. So this is just the generic concept of what an equation would look like. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the different types of properties that we have. So the first property is called the addition of property of equality. And the statement of the property is A equals B is equivalent to A plus C equal to B plus C as well. So basically what this is saying is you ha if you have a statement like this, what you can do is go ahead and add the exact same number to both sides and you haven't done anything different to the equation. You've still balanced it. The key thing to note here is if you add a number to one side, you must add it to the other side to keep things equal. Like if you want to treat your children equally and you buy one of them an ice cream cone, you should buy all of them an ice cream cone. So for example, if we had a problem x plus 4 equals 9, what I could do is I could technically add a number to both sides of the equation. We have this side, oops, wrong pen there. We have this side and this side. I could add a number, I could either add a positive number, like plus 4 to both sides, or I could add a negative number, like a negative 4 to both sides. So the one thing about this property is that it's including the topic of adding negatives. Okay. So if I was trying to get x by itself on one side, what I would choose to do is subtract 4 from both sides. Why would I do that? Well, because 4 minus 4 would be 0. I would be left with x on this side equal to, well, what's 9 minus 4? It's going to be 5. Okay, so for solving equations, some students have a hard time remembering um, the left side and right side of an equal sign. So, what I'll allow you to do in this class, and you know, once again, this depends on your instructor. If you want to keep a small light version of the line continuing through your equal sign, so you remember the left side and the right side, you can go ahead and do that. Hopefully, at the end of the course, you will no longer need that line to keep track of left and right side. But if you need to do that in the beginning, go ahead. All right, but once again, that's something I will allow. Other professors may not allow that. So the next property is multiplication, and this also includes division sort of underneath it. Once again, if you start with a equals b, this is equivalent to a times b, or times c, excuse me, equal to b times c. So once again, if you multiply one number by one, if you multiply one side by a number, you can, and you need to, multiply the other side by the same number. Here's an example. If you have 4 times x equals 24, and I want to solve for 4, I can multiply both sides by a fourth, which would be the same thing as actually dividing by 4, just so you know. When I do that, Remember, we have that imaginary 1 underneath. We can go ahead and cancel the 4s, and look, x is by itself. And then simplifying this, that's 24 divided by 4, which would be 6. So x equals 6. All right, let's take a look at actually applying these properties. Hopefully you've already seen those properties before. If not, we'll go over them. OK, so we have an equation. How do I know this is an equation? Because previously, we've been look, working a lot with um, just expressions. And the rules in expression land are different than the rules in equation land. 
Well, the way I know this is an equation is because right here, there's an equal sign. Which means I have a left-hand side and a right-hand side. Okay. So we know it's an equation, which means I can use all of these properties up here. All right. And I want to solve for v. Well, to do that, first thing I want to do is get rid of all those parentheses. Let's go ahead and use the distribution property on both sides of the equal sign. So that'll be 5v minus 20 minus 2 equals 2v plus 14 minus 3. And um, I'll just go ahead and use that concept I was using before about keeping the little line down the equal sign. You do not need to use the green line. For those of you who want to use the or follow my example with the green line, you can go ahead and do that. For those of you who are perfectly fine at keeping the left side and the right side separate, don't need to use the green line. All right, so on both sides, let's see, simplifying. Let's combine like terms here and then like terms on this side. So that'll be 5v minus 22 equals 2v plus, oops, 11. Well, I want to solve for v, which means I want to get v by itself. So I want to get my variable on one side, I'll use x, and then the numbers on the other. And that's how I solve a linear. And at the moment, I have a mix. I have number on one side and on the other side, and then my variable on one side and the other side. So plan, let's move things to the right side. Um, for now, I'm going to move the variables to the left. So in order to get rid of a positive 2v, I'm going to subtract 2v. Why? Well, 2 minus 2 would be 0. So those cancel each other out, and I'll minus it to the other side. Remember, you have to do it to both sides. Okay, and then I have 3v minus 22 equals 11. Awesome! v's are in one place. Let's go ahead and move the numbers to the other side. How do I get rid of a negative 22? Well, I'll add 22. And I have to do it once again to both sides. Let's continue our work over here. And let's see what do I have. I have 3v equals 11 plus 22, 33. I'll use that little green line again. Now, to get v by itself, well, right now there's a 3 being multiplied to the v. So to undo multiplication, we're going to divide. Or this would be the same as just doing that multiplying by 1 over 3. I'll just go ahead and do the division symbol. Same thing. 33 divided by 3 is going to be 11. So we have v equals 11. There we go. Box our answer. Next problem. Okay, this one is definitely more complicated. We have fractions going on. But one of the nice things is in the denominator, we don't have any variables. So I don't have to worry about anything becoming undefined at the moment. But I don't like the fractions. And so I'm going to decide to clear the fractions. Now the only time you can just get rid of fractions by clearing is if you have an equal sign. Why? Because I have that rule that if I multiply one side by a number, I can multiply the other side by the number and everything's okay. Remember that only works for equations. Do not try it on an expression. Okay, so getting rid of the denominator, I want to find the lowest common denominator. Hmm, let's see, I have a 5, a 2, and a 15 in the denominators. What's the denominator of the 2? It's just a 1. Okay, 5, 2, and 15, let's see. Well, if I split 15 up, that's 3 times 5. So what I need is a 5, a 2, and a 3. And they're all satisfied. So let's go ahead and do that. 5, 2, and 3. Which would actually be 5 times 2 is 10, times 3, 30. So my lowest common denominator is 30. Let's rewrite this problem. And multiply both sides by 30. Why am I doing this? I want to get rid of the denominators. Multiply both sides by 30. And when I do that, I now need to use the distribution property 
So it's going to multiply into each term on this side, and then multiply into each term on this side. Remember, my goal is to cancel the denominators. So I have 30, and I'll put it over 1, times m minus 2 over 5 minus 30 over 1 times the m minus 4 over 2 equals, oh, my equal sign's getting a little crooked there. Let's see, m plus 5 over 15 times 30 plus 2 over 1 times 30. All right, let's see if my plan for getting rid of the denominators actually works. All right, looking at this term here, let me actually change my pen to red. Nah, let's change it to yellow. Looking at these guys here, um, 5 cancels with a 30, and I'm left with, let's see, 5 times 6 is 30. All right, looking at these terms here, the 2 cancels with a 30, and I'm left with 15. Looking at this term here, 15 cancels with a 30, and I'm left with 2. And looking at the last term, there's nothing to cancel with a 30, so nothing cancels. Let's rewrite what we have left over. We have 6 times m minus 2 minus 15 times m minus 2. Notice I'm putting the binomials in parentheses. That is important. Equals 2 times m plus 5. Notice here I rewrote this with the 2 in front. That's okay because we're using multiplication. Plus 2 times 30. Okay, hey look, the denominators are gone. Many fractions are gone. Once again, we can do this when we have an equation. Do not attempt it with an expression. All right, so solving. Well, let's get rid of those parentheses. Distribution, here I come. Okay, so we have 6m minus 12 minus 15m plus, ooh, 15 times 4, 20, 60. Equals 2m plus 10 plus 60. Let me erase my side work here. Okay, so focusing on both sides of the equation, I'm going to go ahead, let me just draw my little line down here. Most likely, or it'd be preferred if this middle line was straight, but sadly it's not. It's always my goal to make sure my equations are as neat as possible. Okay, so simplifying on the left side... Let's see, like terms, 6m, negative 5m, and then the negative 12 and the 60. So let's go ahead and simplify those. Negative 15 and 6, that's negative 9m, and then 60 minus 12. Ooh, let's do that by hand. Okay. Borrowing 5, 1, 6 can go into 2, 8. 48, let's see, is that right? 48 plus 12 would be 8, 9, 10, 4, 5, 6. Yep, that's right. Okay, so that's going to be 48. And then 2m, and adding these guys together, 70. All right, we're on the way. Things are getting simpler by the minute. Okay, let's get the variables on one side. I'll go ahead and just keep getting the variables to the left side, so I'll minus 2 from both sides, because that cancels. And then, what do I have? Let's continue our work over here. 9m minus 2m is going to be 11m, negative 11m, plus 48 equals 70. Okay, let's get the 48 to the other side, so to get rid of it, it's a positive 48, so we have to subtract 48. you got to do the opposite. Negative 11m equals 70 minus 48. Now, what is 70 minus 48? That'll be 22. All right. Okay, we got to get rid of this negative 11. So let's go ahead and divide by negative 11. That'll perfectly cancel out the negative 11, and I'll be left with m equals 22 divided by negative 11, which is going to be negative 2. And that's it. We are done. 
Okay, let's take a look at the next objective. This is identifying conditional equations, identities, and contradictions. So most of the time, the equations we'll work with are conditional equations. What does that mean? Well, that means that your equation is true for some values of the variable and false for other variables. Yeah, sorry, other values. So let's write that down. Is true for some values of the variable and false for others. What does this mean? Well, for example, our answer here was negative 2. That means negative 2 is true in this equation, but m does not equal 5. That would be false. So we actually only have one answer here. All the other numbers in the world do not work. So that's an, a conditional equation. An identity equation is true for all values of the variable. And there'd be a little caveat here about for what it's defined for, but for now let's just keep it at that. And then contradictory equations are equations that are false for all values of the variable. And we'll get into examples of these two right below. Identify whether your equation is conditional, an identity, or a contradiction. All right, let's go ahead and solve, and we'll see what we get. So for the first equation, well, we have x on two sides. Let's get x on one side. I'll go ahead and subtract 5x from both sides. And you know what? Let's go ahead and draw that green line down the middle to keep our equation in order. So we have x. You could write 1x, but most of us just write x. Minus 3 equals negative 4. Let's get the numbers on one side. So let's, okay, how do we get rid of a negative 3? We'll add 3 to both sides. And x equals negative 1. <clears throat> well, we have one answer. So this is going to be a conditional equation. This equation is true with the condition that x equals 1. No other answer would work. x can't be 0, 11, 45, and so on. Let's take a look at b. Okay, to solve this, I want to get rid of those parentheses, so let's go ahead and use the distribution. And one thing to note here, there is a small typo. Please go ahead and make this into a plus sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep solving. Please put that plus sign in. 6x plus 3 equals 6x plus 3. All right, let's go ahead and solve for x. Minusing x from both sides, we're left with... Oh, darn. The variable cancels out. And I'm left with 3 equals 3. Well, the thing to check, if your variable cancels out, ask yourself, is that a true statement? Does 3 equal 3? It's true. So because this is true, this is actually an identity equation. So basically, all values of x for which the expression is defined for works. So you could pick the value of 1, plug it in, and you would get the same answer. You can go ahead and check that for fun on the side. All right, so this is an identity equation. Let's like, take a look at the last one. Once again, let's go ahead and get rid of those parentheses on part C. I'll go ahead and draw my equation line down there. Once again, you do not need to copy down the green line. 6x minus 3 equals 6x minus 14. All right, let's solve for x, subtracting from both sides. Ah, oh, darn, once again, my variables cancel out, and this time I'm left with negative 3 equals negative 14. That doesn't make sense. Negative 3 doesn't equal negative 14. This is falsch. Just joking, that's the German. False. Okay, so that, then this is false. It's not an identity equation. This is a contradiction. It doesn't make sense. It's a contradiction. Negative 3 doesn't equal negative 4. So it's a contradiction or a contradictory equation. All right, those are the three different types. 
if your variable cancels out, you have one of two options. It's either an identity, where the statement is true, or it's a contradiction, where the statement is false. Those kinds don't really happen too much in my math classes. I don't think I've seen it happen that often. Most of the time, if your variable cancels out, you might have done something wrong. <laughs> it's, it's possible for this to be one of the answers, but most of the time we're trying to see if you can solve for an actual variable. So if your variable cancels out, just check your work. Objective three, solve rational equations. Okay, so one big, huge thing about rational equations is the fact that your variable will be in the denominator. Or it may be. And that brings about a problem. If your variable is in the denominator, for example, 1 over x, we have some restrictions on the value that x can be. Are we allowed to have x equal to 0? The answer is no, because if x was 0, we would have 1 over 0, which is undefined. So for this specific problem, we have the restriction that x cannot equal 0. So basically, the restriction for rational equations is that you need to make sure your denominator does not equal 0. Basically, you need to check your solution. It does not make the denominator 0. Okay, so sort of an extra added step, but we can do it. All right, example three, solve the following rational equations and check the solution. All right, let's go ahead and solve. Well, hmm, we have fractions. Let's get rid of those fractions. To do that, we're going to multiply both sides by an LCD. What would the LCD here be? It looks like 2x. Okay. So multiplying both sides by 2x. Let me go ahead and first write this out again. And I'll put the 3 over a 1. So let's multiply both sides by 2x. I'm going to have to distribute in this 2x to both sides. So we have 2x over 1 times 12 over x equals 6 over 2x times that 2x that we distributed in plus 3 over 1 times the 2x. I'll put them both over 1. Let's go ahead and see if our denominators cancel. x cancels, x cancels, 2x, 2x. And this last term, nothing cancels. So we're left with 2 times 12 equals... 6, oh, everything's gone there, plus 3 times 2x. Let me continue my equation line. All right, so 2 times 12 is 24 equals 6 plus 6x. Since the variable is already by itself on the left side, I'm going to go ahead, keep it on, oh, sorry, it's the right side. I'll keep it on the right side and subtract the 6 to the other side. Let's continue working over here. I have 24 minus 6, which is going to be 18, equals 6x. Okay, let's go ahead and keep solving for x. I divide by 6 from both sides. I'll keep that line going. And I'll be left with 3 equals x. Before I box my answer, remember, what was weird about this problem? Well, my variable was in the denominator. That means there's a possibility I could get 0 in my denominator. Let's check. If x equals 3, do any of these turn into 0? Well, if x equals 3, that's just 12 over 3, no problem. If x equals 3 there, that's just 2 times 3, which is 6. So the x is not problematic, or x equals 3 is not problematic. We're good. We've checked. It checks out. When would it have been problematic? If x equaled 0, then we would have had 0 in the denominator, and we would have said, no solution. 
right, let's take a look at B. Once again, we have a slight problem, or problem, problem. Red flag, variable in the denominator. Gotta keep check of that. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the lowest common denominator, when I look at these three, the LCD is gonna be five times X minus four. Okay, yep, each of them is a part of here, so we're good. Which means I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this to both sides because it is an equation and I can do that. Five times X minus four, five times X minus four. And remember my goal is to get rid of the fractions. Let me go ahead and rewrite this and then we'll see if all our fractions cancel out. Okay, so distributing in the, x, the 5 times x minus 4 on both sides. And I can put them all over 1. Alright, let's see what cancels in the first side over here. The x minus 4s cancel. In this term, the x minus 4s also cancel. And in the last term, just the 5s cancel. And I am left with 5 times x equals 4 times 5 plus oh, minus 4 times x minus 4. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of those parentheses on the side. And I'm left with 5x equals 20 minus 4x plus 16. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and draw on that green line. Oops, that was ugly. All right, no need to draw that in if you don't want to. Then we have 5x equals, um, combining the 20 and the 16, I'm left with 36. Okay, let's get x on one side. I'm going to go ahead and move it to the left side, so I'll add 4x to both sides. And that will be 9x equals 36. Let's go ahead and move our work to the side for the final step. Okay, getting x by itself, we'll go ahead and divide both sides by 9, and I am left with x equals 4. Okay, so I might want to just box my final answer and move on, but we have a problem. Do you remember what the problem was? We have x in the denominator, which means we may have a restriction. Let's check. If I plug in the answer of 4 into my answer here, or into my denominator, I'll get 4 minus 4. What does that equal? <gasps> it's 0! Okay, that is a no can do. We cannot let our denominator equal 0. Why? It's undefined. We have a problem. We cannot use 4 as our answer. But 4 was the only answer we got. So what am I going to say? The answer is going to be no solution. So what you can say is 4 makes the denominator undefined. I'll just use u and d for undefined. So there is no solution. How sad. We worked so hard for no solution. But sometimes it's actually good to know that there is no solution. Okay, for example, maybe if you're trying to find some sort of, um, in a real life world problem, maybe you're trying to create create a bridge in some area and trying to use certain materials and then you find out oh we can't use those materials there's no solution there that's good move on and try something else okay so that would be our answer no solution let's take a look at the next problem okay this one's a bump up from the other ones we have a trinomial in the denominator so what we're gonna do first is actually factor that trinomial and then we'll try and find our LCD to cancel the fractions. Let's see, that factors into x plus 4. Let's see, x plus 4. Yeah, that would work in x plus 1. Awesome, that works. Okay, so we're able to factor the denominator. So now, for my lowest common denominator, let's see. I'll just take 1. Uh, okay, so I know we need an x plus 4 and an x plus 1. Let's check the other denominators. That has an x plus 4. Good and an x plus 1. Good, okay, we've satisfied, satisfied all the denominators. Once again, why am I finding the LCD? Because 
I want to get rid of the fractions. Why can I get rid of the fractions? Because we're in equation land. Cannot do this just with expressions. You have to be careful with expressions. Okay, let's see. Um, I'll rewrite this. Oops, minus. And let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the common denominator in hopes that it will cancel out the denominators. All right. Then for the binomial, we'll go ahead and distribute this in. So I have x plus 4, x plus 1. I'll put it over a 1, times the 11 over x plus 4 times x plus 1, minus, ooh, it's getting so messy, x plus 4 times x plus 1 over 1, times the 3 over x plus 4, equals 1 over x plus 1, times the x plus 4, times the x plus 1. That's supposed to be a 4. Okay, so some of you might be able to do this multiplying step here in your head, which is perfectly fine. You don't actually have to write this step out. Problem with not writing the step out is if you accidentally cancel something wrong, then you might get the wrong answer. So the more step you, or the most steps you show, the more likely you'll earn points along the way. All right, let's see what cancels. Mm. Oh, these guys all cancel. I'm just left with 11 x minus 4, or x plus 4 is cancel, so I'm left with the x plus 1 and the 3. x minus 1 is cancel, and I'm just left with the x plus 4 and the 1. Let's go ahead and write this down. Let's see, I have 11 minus 3 times the x plus 1 equals 1 times the x plus 4, so I'll just write x plus 4. As you can see, this equationing is not exactly following a straight line. So a little harder to follow, but let's go ahead and do that. All right. Let's use the distribution property to get rid of those parentheses there. And I have 11 minus 3x minus 3 equals x plus 4. Okay, combining like terms on this side. And I get negative 3x, let's see, 7, 8 plus 8 equals x plus 4. All right, we want to get x's to one side. This time, I'll move the x to the left-hand side. Ooh, that's supposed to be a 3. Plusing 3x to both sides, that cancels there. And I'm left with 8 equals 4x plus 4. Let's get the numbers to one side, so I'll go ahead and subtract the 4 from both sides. And I'm left with 4 equals 4x. Divide both sides by 4 to get x by itself. And I'm left with 1 equals x. But we're not done. we got to go ahead and check and make sure that this works out. If x equals 1, does it make any of my denominators equal 0? Well, when I plug in 1 here, that'll be 5 plus 2. So 5 times 2, sorry. That'll be 5, oops, wrong pen. 5 times 2, which is just going to be 10, so that one checks out. If I plug in 1 here, that'll be 5. That's fine, it checks out. If I plug in 1 here, it'll be 2. That's fine, it checks out. Okay, so 1 doesn't make any of my denominators 0, so we're all good. We've checked. And it checks out. Let's look at objective 4 which I believe is the last objective for this section. This is solving literal equations for a specified variable. Okay, so in this one, you're not going to get a number answer. This is what's weird about this objective. You don't get a number answer. Basically, you're just rewriting the equation to isolate one of the other variables. Let's go ahead and look. Solving A, we're going to solve for T. So at the moment, what is it solved for? At the moment, it's solved for d, because d is by itself. But we want to solve for t. 
Notice this is the motion problem formula for your word problems. All right, so to solve for t, let's see, well, what's keeping t from being by itself? That r, and it's being multiplied. So let's undo that multiplication by dividing both sides by r. So I get that d over r, not t, over r equals t, which you could rewrite as t equals d over r. And there we go, we have solved for t because t is isolated. So if you're isolated, you're solved for. Okay, let's look at the next one. Solve a equals half h times b plus b for capital B. All right, here's where the weird difference comes in. We're solving for a capital B, not the lowercase b. And this capital B appears only once, which is nice. It's harder when it appears twice. Okay, how to get rid of things? Well. I could go ahead and multiply in all of this, but what I'm going to do instead, I'll multiply both sides by 2. Let me change that color. And when I do that, it'll cancel with that too. So I'll have 2a equals h times b plus b. Still working to get the capital B by itself, so let's divide both sides by h. Once again, you can pause the video and try to work on this by yourself and check back in with me. Okay, we almost have capital B by itself. What's keeping capital B from being by itself? Well, it's being added to a lowercase b. How do you undo addition? Well, you subtract. So let's go ahead and subtract b from both sides. Now this is kind of weird because we have the 2a over h minus b. Can we add these together? Well, you could create the same denominator for b. You could go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by h, and then you would get 2a over h minus bh over h, which would equal 2a minus bh over h. You could do that. But a lot of the times, you could have just kept it in this form. So what we call these two different answers here are equivalent answers. They mean the same thing. So, I guess some professors I've run into as when I was a student would have preferred this as the final answer. Other professors would have been fine with this as the final answer. So I guess for me, I would accept both of these as your final answer. But, but good thing to know is that in case you're working on a problem in the textbook and you get this answer, and the textbook gives you this answer, it's good to know that those two are equivalent answers. All right, example five, last example. Solve the following equations for x. All right, let's go ahead. As usual, I like to find out where my variable is. Let's see, x is here. Oh, darn, but x is also there. x is in two places. How do I do that? Well, what I'm going to do is, let's rewrite this, I want to get everything that has my variable that I want on one side and everything that doesn't on the other side. So since these two terms contain my variable, I'm going to move them to the same side. So let's do that. Let's subtract the 2x from both sides. And I'm left with 3xy minus 2x equals y. All right, but we still have the same problem. We can't actually combine them. They're not like terms. And x still appears twice. I'm kind of stuck. These two terms have the same factor. Ah, factor. We can factor out the x, because both of these terms contain x. So when I factor out the x, I'm left with 3y minus 2 equals y. And look, x appears once, because I factored it out. Now, how do we get x by itself? Well, it's being multiplied by this binomial. So to undo multiplication, we'll divide both sides. And what is our answer? x equals y divided by 3y minus 2. And there we go. We've solved for x. All right, as usual, email me if you have any questions on the homework.